What's up everybody, this is Tuba Solo coming at you with another gear discussion. This time we're going to be looking at backpacking and hiking cook kit windscreens. For those of you that are new here, this channel is all about hiking, backpacking, and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond. If that interests you, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to click the bell for notifications. That way you never miss a video. Now let's get on with our discussion about windscreens. Uh, hopefully, as you've done your research on YouTube, you've seen some of my cook kit videos. Um, if you haven't, I'm going to go ahead and link them in the card in the upper right hand corner. Um, the one thing that I realized that I've done a number of cook kit videos and shown a lot of options, one of the things I never really went over is the type of windscreens that I use. Now, through my, the natural progression of my hiking and backpacking, um, I've used a different, uh, you know, used a bunch of different types of uh, windscreens. I've used um, aluminum foil, I've used thicker gauge aluminum foil, I've used rocks, I've used Reflectix, I've used sit pads, I've used my backpack, and it seems like no matter what, um, what option I've used for my, for my particular windscreen, um, despite the fact it needs to meet a certain level of criteria for it to be something that I'm actually going to use and, and not just have something that I carry all the time. Um, number one, it has to be easy to use. Number two, it has to be as light as possible. And number three, it has to be tall enough. And I'll go ahead and get into that um, in a little bit when I show you what I actually use 90% uh, of the time. Now, as far as ease of use is concerned, um, there's a particular reason why I have this GSI setup right here. Now, I want to say right off the bat, I love the concept that GSI came up with when it came to these, these windscreens. Now, personally, I feel like there's a couple of weaknesses here um, in the system. Um, one of the things is that um, it is a little bit finicky up here, this thing. Once you get it set, it usually sits pretty well, but if you knock it even in the slightest, uh, things tend to kind of fall apart on this. And if you're in the middle of a boil and this thing tips, tips over, um, yeah, it's just going to be, you know, uh, potentially a bad situation. So I like the concept, but something like this, like the GSI brand uh, windscreens that go with the with the GSI Minimalist in this particular case, um, they they don't check all the buttons for me. Now, it's definitely easy to use in, con you know, in, in uh, when you look at the concept that they have, the concept is easy to use, but when you actually use it, it's actually not that easy to use because it's so finicky sometimes. On the second, um, uh, you know, benchmark, uh, is it as light as possible? I feel like this, this uh, heavy gauge aluminum and windscreens of this type, I feel are a little bit too, too overbuilt for what you really need. And the third thing, which is probably the 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 thing that you know disqualifies it the most, is actually the uh, the efficiency that it's going to have when you utilize it um, as it ref uh, as it relates to. Uh, the third benchmark, which was, is the windscreen tall enough? Now, I know this is a little bit off camera, but you still kind of get the idea. The windscreen right over here, it certainly covers the flame of the stove. I mean, it is open on the bottom, which is not a bad thing, but yeah, you can definitely get wind coming through the bottom. But the bigger problem is everything from the edge of this windscreen up. Now, if you have hardly any water in that cup, it's not going to be that big a deal, but if you're boiling water or if you're cooking something that's above this windscreen and you have wind that's actively blowing on the pot, really everything that's not covered is just losing heat. So throughout the, the, the times that I've gone backpacking and hiking, I've realized that uh, having a windscreen that's tall enough is very important. If it doesn't cover the entire pot, essentially I'm just losing heat. So again, I like the concept that GSI came up with, but when you kind of consider, is it easy to use, is it light as possible, and is it tall enough, it kind of doesn't really click all those, all those uh, benchmarks that I think are very important when it comes to a windscreen. So I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side, and I'm going to go over the things that I use for my particular windscreen, and the things that I use 90% of the time when I go backpacking and hiking. Now, I purposely have the Soda Windmaster stove here, and I wanted to speak about that for, for just one second. It's a tremendously good stove. This concave burner head that's on the top, I mean, it makes all the difference in the whole wide world when it comes to, to protecting the flame. You know, and I've said this before in previous videos, hence the name Windmaster. I mean, it's it's got this concave burner head, and... 
Um, you know, it, it really does an excellent job of protecting the flame from the wind. Now, it doesn't mean that it's fully 100% um, coverage. I mean, you can still get wind that will travel in, be, you know, um, just below the pot and in between, um, you know, the, the edge of the concave head right here. You can still get wind through there, um, you know, hence you'll need some kind of windscreen. But nine times out of ten, this is the only thing that I use when I'm, when I'm uh, going backpacking. Um, I think it's vitally important that you get yourself a stove that does everything that it can to protect the flame itself from the wind. I think that's the, the first line of defense that every single person should be looking at. For me, it just so happens to be the, the Soto Windmaster. I feel like this stove by far has, been, uh, has produced the best results for me. Uh, now with that said, the next thing that I wanted to look at is the actual options that I use for, for windscreens. Now, um, really the, the one thing that I probably use more than, than anything when I don't have rocks available is this piece of Reflectix. I'm going to go ahead and cut in some video over here of me using this Reflectix. Um, this has been with me, um, gosh, I want to say at least a couple years I've been using this piece of Reflectix. What's really nice about this thing is that it's, it, it really does uh, click all three options. It's easy to use. It's certainly light. I mean, this thing hardly weighs a thing. And the best part of all is it's tall enough. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to, try to show you guys this. I know the, the uh, camera angle is a, little bit, is a little bit weird, but if you take a look at it, when you look at the height of the windscreen in comparison to the height of the pot, you'll see that the windscreen is tall enough to cover most of the pot. I mean, I've never made anything in this thing where, where it was all the way up to the upper, upper lip of that uh, MSR Titan kettle. But as you can see, the windscreen is tall enough to cover the pot. So not only am I covering my flame, but I'm also covering the, uh, the wall of the pot and all the stuff that's in it so that it's not losing heat so that as, as wind pushes against it, it's being covered and, and uh, protecting the, um, uh, the contents inside from, from losing a ton of heat. Now along with having a stove that does everything that it can to protect um, the flame from the wind, there's also some other things that you can use that will click off all three of those options over there, or rather all three of those benchmarks. Things that are easy to use, they're light as possible, and they're tall enough. Um, I showed you guys how the Reflectix, essentially, uh, this piece of Reflectix that I used was tall enough. Um, so you kind of get the idea, and, and you're going to see as you go through the different options um, that I'm going to show you here, you're going to see that they're going to click off all three of those benchmarks. So we went over the Reflectix. It's easy to use, it's light, and it's certainly tall enough to cover, uh, to cover the pot. Some of the other options that you have, um, I'll go ahead and cut in some video over here. Um, where I used um, I used rocks and other natural options like at um, Ontario Peak I went ahead and I created myself a rock I guess you can call it a rock windscreen now I'll be honest with you if I can and uh, and easily do a rock windscreen I'll definitely use that first or if there's some kind of a tree that I can set up with similar to how I did at Dry Lake um, I'll definitely use those natural options if if I have them available to me and then that way I can utilize even the Reflectix and my natural rock options or wood options that I have there, like uh, like different tree stumps that are that are uh, uh, available to me. So uh, Reflectix works great. Rocks and other natural options, they're all easy to use. They're not light, but obviously you don't have to carry rocks. You know, you don't have to carry a tree with you, so it's usually there. And you can certainly make it tall enough, especially if you're using rocks or especially if you're looking at a tree. Find yourself a tree that that covers the entire height of what you're going to be doing when you're cooking. Uh, one other option that you have is your uh, pot cozy. I'll go ahead and uh, put in, um, not your pot cozy, rather your food cozy. If you're somebody who rehydrates food a lot and you happen to have a food cozy, uh, I, I happen to have the, um, uh, the packet gourmet cozy, that uh, koozie or whatever that you see in all my videos. I've used that as a windscreen. It's easy to use, it's light, and it might be tall enough depending on your setup. In the particular case where I was at Catalina Island, it happened to be tall enough for what I was doing there. So I wouldn't necessarily rely on that always, but if that works for you, that's also another option. Then you don't even have to carry the Reflectix. 
One other option too is utilizing a sit pad. Essentially it's the same exact thing as a piece of Reflectix. Uh, you're still going to use rocks to set it up. Um, but um, essentially you're just going to be using your sit pad. Now the only reason that I don't use my sit pad usually as a windscreen is because a lot of times since I'm cooking on the ground I'm using this uh, to put my knee down on so I'll, I'll flatten this out and I'll put my knee down as I'm kind of cooking and I'll stoop down as I'm cooking so for me this this uh, even though I'm carrying this I always typically will take a Reflectix with me anyways that way I have both uh, the ability to go ahead and stoop down and not crush my knee and then also be able to protect what I'm cooking with the uh, the windscreen that I have. Um, the last option that you can use um, is uh, a backpack even. I've actually used my backpack. I don't have any video of that. Um, it was actually, believe it or not, at, um, at uh, Catalina, the last day when I was making my ramen rescue. I wanna say that I used my backpack, if I recall correctly, because the, the koozie that I had, while you know this is the perfect example it might be tall enough for your setup well in that particular case it was not tall enough for my setup so i ended up having to use my backpack but again it's something easy to use it's not necessarily light but you were going to carry it anyway so it's there and it's certainly tall enough so hopefully this kind of gives you guys some ideas on what would be a good windscreen for you um, you know, for me, you know, really the Reflectix and then utilizing rocks and other natural options have been the two best things for me. But, you know, I'd love to know what do you guys use for a windscreen? You know, as I always say in my gear videos, I love, uh, you know, to learn. I want to hear constructive criticism. What do you guys use? I want to, I want to know what you guys use. Uh, do you see a weakness in this setup that I have over here? Go ahead and let me know in the comments what it is that you use for your, um, for your windscreen. I would love to know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion on windscreens, and if you liked this video and found the information useful, I'd really appreciate it if you'd click on the like button below. And again, if you're interested in hiking and backpacking and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond, consider subscribing and make sure to hit that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching my video, and we'll see you next time.